Hello everyone, welcome to another build guide. Today I'm bringing you the call.werber. You're gonna be able to find this complete build guide on Maxroll with a complete overview of all the skills, the gearing, etc. Now let's get in game and see some gameplay. As you can see, obviously this is a Werber form, so the most important thing is gonna be to transform of course as a Werber. We're gonna press our Q, we're gonna transform and we're gonna be this mighty boar and we're gonna start rampaging as you rampage through the battlefield you can release your mole to release entangling roots and kill enemies around you you can also use swipe to buff your uh, your damage and use warcry to cast entang uh, maelstorms as you can see there's been quite a bit of changes to this build in the recent past and uh, thankfully uh, thanks to the buffs to rage raid generation you no longer need to invest into Spriggan form for rage or to use any sort of uh, bind generation or rage generation outside of just like what you get from swipe and what you get from uh, from from just like the Werber form tree. Uh, this has uh, made this build being extremely extremely more cozy to play uh, as you can basically play it as soon as you get entangling roots you can basically play the build although the build guide is recommended for level 70 as it includes very detailed gearing and very detailed um, very detailed uh, you know skill information etc again feel free to spam your abilities you know feel free to spam warcry feel free to spam maul you will be completely fine when it comes to rage and when it comes to uh, staying in Werber form, of course. You can see, we also have a lot of uh, rage generation when hitting rares. So if you see an uh, enemy with a yellow bar, make sure you use it to generate extra rage. But yeah, the build is uh, extremely cozy now. As you can see, there is basically no rage issues as long as you're hitting enemies. And uh, yeah, it's really, really, really powerful. Really, really beginner friendly. And I highly, highly, highly recommend it. I'm gonna finish the, the timeline here. And we can go over to the build to explain a bit how it goes and what it works with, good with. All right, we're uh, back on the build guide. Uh, you have a, a brief overview, like I mentioned, this is meant for level 70. But you know, if you wish to learn the build from, from scratch and you wanna level up a new character, we have a leveling guide for you. A quick thing I wanna mention before we keep going. Uh, every build in Maxroll has a loot filter, make sure to download it, it's very easy, you go here, you go save link as, and you can save the filter and use it on your filter folder inside of Last Epoch. So, let's go over the build really quick and explain what are the pros and the cons. So first we have Werber form of course, and this ability allows us to generate a lot of rage thanks to invigorating, and thanks to frenzied strikes, this will basically allow us to stay on Werber form even when fighting single targets, bosses, etc. Uh, for that reason, obviously, we're using Entangling Roots and wood, wood, Woodland Bear. <laughs> it's uh, necessary in order for us to proc it. So, of course, spell damage per strength, a core element of, st of uh, uh, scaling the build's damage. And you know, the Maelstorms are key for your single target damage. Since we don't need to allocate points on poisonous seeds or rampant growth, we can actually go for a full damage setup on entangling roots. Again, uh, you have a complete progression point by point here. So if you happen to find plus skills, etc., this is how you should allocate them, in my personal opinion. Uh, Maelstorm, again, this is basically your single target DPS. So you want to grab all the damage possible. You also get the frenzy and the, and the, and the haste, which is very handy while mapping and while single targeting bosses and make sure you get 60 attunement so you can uh, double the damage that this ability scales with uh, from this note right there's this threshold of the 60 attunement then we have warcry uh, warcry is key to get uh, obviously the immunity to get the immunity frames when we warcry to get a bit you know to immune boss attacks etc and um, berserk berserk is basically a buff that uh, after we use warcry gives us a lot of the a lot of attack speed and that way we can, you know, attack single targets in order to proc uh, the Your Sign Storm node inside of Werber that allows us to proc Maelstorms on hit. 
again very very classic build you also generate some maelstroms when you war cry and it's extremely handy and this is a new change from the from this patch but basically rage uh, swipe now grants you a, a global damage multiplier so the idea for this is that you can actually generate uh, stacks while using swipe that will proc maelstroms that also stack aspect of the panther that gives you a global damage multiplier which is obviously extremely amazing because the build didn't have the best single target damage before and now it's a bit better thanks to other buffs like the throne of ambition buff again if you're struggling with rage if you have tears of the forest if you just don't want to be looking at your screen and you want to be playing netflix and, and stuff you want you don't want to min max the build too much again there's some tips for you here in order to generate rage a bit more cozy but as i've just displayed on the gameplay you don't actually need uh, any of this but Again, if you want to go for the extra quality of life, here, here is what you need to do. But you will lose damage, so keep that in mind. Again, passives, very straightforward. Again, the entire tree tells you exactly what to get. If you want a, a more detailed explanation on why, what we're getting what, why we're getting what, uh, just go check the, the... Just read the guide, you know. It explains pretty much everything on the scaling section of the guide. Uh, but, you know, uh, some notable notes are the... The crude avoidance you get per attunement, the cold penetration, you know, hide skin to get tanky, the attack speed, the rage decay, the penetration, elemental penetration, and obviously the famous uh, Beastmaster tax, you know, which gives you a lot of uh, damage reduction thanks to aspect of the boar and Ursine strength. Uh, note to mention, don't underestimate this point in ambush, because every 5 seconds you get, uh, you know, a bit, of, a bit of a buff of attack speed of 10%. You know, it's literally one point, why not take it, you know, to get more more maelstroms? So, a little tip there. For gameplay, again, you have the entire rotation, but it's pretty simple, right? You cause roar, you get your maelstroms, you rampage towards the enemies, you maul, and then when you when you get enemies, you just swipe. It's very, very straightforward. There are some things that you can do to minimax your single target damage, but overall, pretty easy build to play. Again, you also have some advanced tips here if you want to maximize your mobility, etc. Uh, okay, in terms of the gearing, uh, the gearing is also, you know, uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm going for this version for a for a for a for a war for a staff. Sorry, the reason I'm going for a staff is because staffs can get increased elemental damage over time. And as you can see, if you manage to get a tier seven of this, well, it rolls up to 700 percent. So yeah, uh, basically a single weapon can give you a thousand percent increased damage. And I think that's better than just having a bit of attack speed on your weapon. You know, a thousand percent increased damage is a lot of damage. <laughs> so again, uh, very straightforward uh, tanking. We're going to be building strength. We're going to be building attunement. We're going to be building vitality. And we're going to be building increased elemental damage over time. Uh, as you know, we get uh, damage per point of strength. Uh, thanks to Werber form. And we want to get 60 points of attunement on or to get our maelstrom damage. Again, you have a complete uh, gear progression. Uh, the gear planner goes from double tier 5s, which are extremely easy to get, to uh, double tier 5s, which is, this is going to be a bit more challenging, especially if you're a beginner. You know, it tells you exactly what to focus, where to get things, why to get things, etc. And, you know, we're going to go back all the way up to, you know, what exalteds you should go for, what type of affixes would you like to seal, etc, etc. We also have recommendations for uniques, recommendations for idols, uh, tips on how to find each item, why you're replacing what item with what, uh, what items, you know, what to use on legendary potential in case you get something crazy. Again, a lot of these items here in the best in slot planner, they're kind of surreal, you're probably not going to see this, but hey, it's just there in case it happens, in case you are the lucky one, hey, we, we got you covered, you know, we min-maxed all of them. Again, a bit of a blessing section. Very important to, gra to get Grand Hunger of the Void pretty much because it gives spell leech and otherwise the build kind of lacks with sustain a bit. But other than that, you know, your classic defensive uh, shred blessing that you go for every build. You know, make sure that you grab the magic find blessings, the drop rate blessings that fit your needs. And again, you have some tips there. Again, for idols. You can get a lot of HP and crit avoidance, you can get elemental resistances when transformed, you can get, again, a lot of HP, resistances, 
and of course Throne of Ambition which grants you a lot of armor and a lot of damage, especially while bossing. Really really good for this build, especially because it lacks a bit of single target, uh, but Throne helps a lot. And you also have some generic tips that you can include. And uh, to finalize the build, we have the build scaling. Again, uh, you have all the information you ever would need here. It explains why everything, where everything is coming. Uh, yeah, I mean, you basically have a complete breakdown of all the decisions here. I know some generic tips too on how to approach the monolith, how to approach each of the dungeons, etc. Again, if you're playing with a party, this build is uh, extremely uh, powerful because it's fast. It can help your teammates uh, because you can be a frontliner. There is minor adjustments you can do to your to your tr skill trees to help uh, your teammates. For example, you know, let's just say you're playing with a with a spellcaster. Well, you might want to grab the points here that give uh, ally ally damage, ally spell damage. For example, you know. You say, ah, I don't want to do that much damage myself, I'm going to buff my allies. You could do that, you know, you could uh, you could spec uh, Warcry a bit more um, supporty, you know, with the healing, etc. So, again, really, really fun build, works great as a solo play and as a party. Uh, go try it out, it's really fun. And remember, if you have any rage sustain, you're, you just need to make sure you are hitting enemies. You, or you could just like use the quality of life version of the build, but be aware that you will lose some damage. Again, thank you very much for watching this video, and if you have any questions, uh, I'll be answering them in the comment section, or you can just read the entire written guide, which I'm sure is gonna solve most of your questions. Uh, thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.